Well, by the way, we'd like to say thank you for uh, you know, staying on the show with us this morning and um, wishing John, you know, quick recovery. If you notice, there's a Justin on John's seat. John is down with a bit of a cold and um, Justin is um, sitting in for him and doing a brilliant job. Thank you so much, Helen. Okay. At this point, we are joined by our second guest on today's show. She's Bukola Lamid, the therapy queen, and she's a certified behavioral therapist and a emotional intelligence specialist and one of Africa's leading family mental health coach. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Welcome, Buki. I hope I can call you that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. At what point do we begin to see uh, maybe a therapist as a family when uh, this issue of um, depression set in? Okay, so let me start this way. It is not only when you don't feel okay that you need a therapist. Okay. So there's this um, mindset about people believing that is when you have issues, that's the only time you consult a therapist. Okay, so um, there's a thin line between coaching and therapy. So it simply means that you want guideline. You want someone to put you through something. You want counsel. So it may necessarily not be mentally inclined. Okay. okay, so you just want someone who can help you manage your emotions. There are people who have been trained to help people manage their emotions. Because you see, emotions are naturally flowing. They are fully flowing. You must, you must have emotions. You, it must come to you. Okay, but if you have this mindset of first aid, you reaching out to um, therapist or practitioner, whoever does anything around the emotion, I, you would not have the uh, extreme of getting depressed. So That's what I'm going to. You're saying that everyone needs a Every, coach. Everybody needs a coach. Yeah, everybody. There's a very thin line between, between sanity and insanity. We don't want to mention the other one. <laughs> So you see, it's very, very important. That is one of the ish things that we face here in this part of the world. People believe it is only when you, you know, we do something we call helicopter emergency. It simply means that it's only when you need, have a problem that you seek solution. You have to do preventive measures. You don't want to get there. Mm. Okay, you don't want to know what depression is. And we're going to talk a bit more about yes. depression because there is a misconception about depression as well, especially in this part of the world. Because at, at this point, I, I'd like for you to um, open our eyes, you know, get us there. You let us begin to understand and appreciate, you know, the extent of this challenge called depression. Let me, let me start Paint this the way. Picture for us. Let me start this way. Okay, I've, your first guest was talking about um, mental health. Let me break the meaning of mental health. Because a lot of people, when they hear mental, it's so stigmatized. Mm -hmm. So when you hear mental, you, hear, you think it's psychosis and all those psychological mm -hmm. things that we talk about. No, mental health is, import, is as important as your physical health. In fact, there is no health without mental health. Mm -hmm. There's no spiritual health. There's no physical health. There's no health can stay without mm -hmm. mental health. So it starts with your mental health. Mm -hmm. And what is this mental health? Mental health is the ability for you to cope. Please notice the cope. You need to cope with everyday stressful mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So the idea is not for you not to have stress. You must have it. It's part of life. But now the ability for you to be able to cope so with So it's a coping stress. mechanism. Yes. So it's more like, if you don't have that coping mechanism, that, that is when now is also mental illness. Mm -hmm. wow. So everybody must have mental health. So it's like someone who, who is hungry, you must eat food. Okay. So it is when you don't eat food that you do what? Probably become ill or sick or you have as, um, all these also, yeah. 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 But it is imperative, very important for you to eat. So that is how important mental health is. Mm -hmm. It starts from there because nothing happens without your mental health. So which, means, which means we're all there at yeah. one we point or the other because health. we have issues at some point mm -hmm. that we are unable to cope with. Now, let me break another um, myth. People think sadness is a bad emotion. It is not. So it is okay to get sad. It is okay to be sad. But when you mm -hmm. now have consistent sadness, Okay, so as psychologists, as mental health practitioners, will say once your sadness or your irritability or whatever you're facing Persist. is consistent over the period of two weeks and over, then we might start looking at, is it depression? Emphasis on two weeks. Yes, at least two weeks. Continuously. That's what mental health and medical 
practitioner said, at least consistently, mm -hmm. you know, excessively. Okay, so it's okay for you to say, I'm not feeling too fine. Okay? So, because we, we do a lot of things around here, we call it maxing. Everybody wants to show muscle and say that, mm. okay, we are fine. Sadness is as a valid emotion as happiness. In wow. fact, if you are too happy, it's mm. a problem. Mm. If you are too sad, it's a problem. You must have a dose of every emotion. Mm. Every emotion you feel is valid. You should be frustrated. You should be sad. You should be happy. You should be angry. You can you even get have... over the top. Yes. It is practically healthy. But when it becomes excessive, when it becomes consistent over a period of time, mm. then you might now be looking at, oh, is it mild depression? But there's a clause there. Psychologists or mental health practitioners need to confirm if it's a clinical depression. Because but, 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 people, you're, you're people making, throw these words around. You're, you're mentioning terms now. You so, said yeah. mild, clinical. Yeah. Are yeah. there different yeah, types different and stages, stages yeah. that we need to know definitely, about? Definitely. Tell so us about it. It starts with somebody getting sad, which is totally normal. And this can come from external stimulus, you know, everyday life. Conflict, family issues, illnesses, sometimes Those are the it's even genetic. Mm. Okay? Mm. Depression can be genetic. So you can actually inherit it okay. from wow. your bloodline. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. So you are it has to come from there. It goes to your central nervous system. Your mind picks an interpretation to an event, then you begin to brood over that event. Mm. But the ability for you to cope and understand that this is an event and it might pass. Or you focus and say, okay, this thing has happened. How can I manage it? That is where we now say your mental health is intact. But the ability for you not to be able to cope and you have this interpretation that, you know, just overwhelms you and breaks you down mm. and takes you away from everyday normal, normal activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm then we, now, we can now begin to say, okay, the person is tending towards depression. But you cannot categorically say that the person is depressed. That's another thing I want everyone listening to us to understand. When can you say? It is only when practitioners, when you go through a, an assessment, psychologists have assessments that we use to ascertain, is this person depressed? Then we now have different types of depression. Okay. Under the clinical depression, we have the very mild one, we have the moderate, then we have severe, depending yeah. on what has triggered it, the environment, what you have done so far. So that's why we are trying to do a lot of preventive measures, trying to tell people about it so that they can quickly identify. Because once it gets too prolonged, it might become very critical mm. and it can be life-threatening. But Buki, okay. don't you think that uh, it's actually difficult not to get depressed in a country <laughs> like ours, when we have to battle with almost everything for our daily living. You battle with traffic, you battle with the price of fuel, you battle with uh, getting to work on time and uh, meeting up with deadlines. Don't you think these are triggers that could ordinarily just set anyone to depression? Beautiful. That is where I'm trying to say that we must draw a line between sadness, irritability, and coping with everyday stresses of life. They, I mean, these things are everyday stresses of life. And you see, you need a bit, like I say, you need a bit of anxiety. You know, there's something on the brain. Let me now tell you what happens when, it, 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 when we're talking about depression. There's something we call the amygdala in the brain. So the amygdala is called the fire alarm center of the brain. It's the one that triggers you when something is coming for you or when you notice a danger. So it comes on, it, it rings like a bell. Mm. It's called the amygdala. So when the amygdala is a bit expanded and is a bit hyperactive, that means you are putting a lot of you know, pressure on the amygdala, then it becomes consistent. Then we can now be saying, okay, depression can be setting in. What this means is that once you see, for instance, you see a snake, the first thing that comes to your mind is snake. It can bite, it can die, right? Mm -hmm. So that your fire alarm is on. You want to look for escape route, right? But when depression sets in is when you now, you're not doing anything. So you have a feeling of hopelessness. You have a feeling of helplessness. So in your mind, you're saying, I'm already dead. Let, whatever let comes. It, whatever comes. But the point is, you have the capability and the ability to cope with what is coming mm. if you can grasp it mm. as early as you can. That is one of the things I really appreciate about Nigerians. We have the ability to bounce. Mm. But most times, a lot of people brood on 
what they are not supposed to focus on. Remember, what you focus on expands. Energy flows through it. So if you focus on problems, you keep seeing problems. But once you see that this is a problem or this is a challenge, how do I walk through it? You don't solve problems by running away from them. You face it. Head on. Yeah. So it is when you run away and you feel helpless, that's when you now say, oh, okay, the sadness or the irritability or the anxiety is being prolonged because mm -hmm. you're not doing anything about it. And what this means is that it now triggers some emotions or some hormones in your system that breaks down your defense mechanism. Do you see how it works? Mm. So you're telling the brain that the brain is helpless, the brain cannot do anything. So the brain cannot do anything, then it releases hormones into your system that makes you break down. So that's when you see, you remember uh, Sariki was saying something like, you are alone, you don't want to, you're having antisocial disorder, mm -hmm. you just don't want to talk to anybody. So I tell a lot of people when you say, oh no, I just want to be by myself, it might be a sign of, um, Incoming depression. Mm. It's not yet depression because it has not been clinically proven. Certified, because yeah. that's, 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 that's the point where we should concentrate on yeah. now. You know, you are living with somebody who is likely having issues and almost in depression. How do you begin to know on a daily basis what are the signs, those signs that are visible and the ones that are probably not visible? Well, most of the time, they are always visible with their body languages, with what they say. They have a consistent way of talking about how they are tired with life, how nothing is working. Mm. Then they have sleeping disorders. Mm. They have eating disorders. Some, some people eat too much. Some, some people don't, don't eat, at, eat all. at all. Mm. Some people sleep too much. Some people don't sleep at all. Then we have antisocial disorder where they just want to be by themselves. They don't want to talk to anybody. Then they start losing interest in things that easily excites them okay. that's a very especially for children so if you want to if you want to notice if a child is suffering anxiety and all that things are naturally we say okay this is this, this is what excites this child okay. they just draw away all right. from certain things from certain people and the same thing with adults as and well. this is the point where we must seek professional yeah. help yeah so okay. when you say that this person is not so excited about everyday activity so it's not something so special, so peculiar. Okay. But this person is just withdrawing Okay, very quickly, into themselves. Okay. you know, you said it uh, uh, when we brought you uh, on uh, that Nigerians are not the ones that would really want to go to a therapist, uh, you know, to go and see uh, life coaches. Mm -hmm. But how do we begin to change that particular narrative? Because when you say you're going to see a therapist or going to see a psychologist like uh, it's already uh, yeah. So what do you do about that? So how do we begin to have this practice of uh, regular checkups with her, maybe uh, shrinks and all of that? Now, we must start from the family. One of my coaches used to say that family is a first nation. If something happens to the family, yeah. it, it will affect the whole nation. Sure. So how do we change narrative? It has to start with every member of the family because you're first a family person before you are that manager, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you are that person or whatever status you carry outside your family. So what we do or what I do personally as a therapist is I try to change the narrative from the family because that is the bedrock of where information starts from. Personally, mm -hmm. in my organization, we visit a religious institution because that carries a lot. You see, we have been stigmatized. Have, there's a stereotypic uh, thing about mental health. People would rather go and seek spiritual help mm. than seek mental help. They are okay. two different things. Okay. The spiritual okay. help is not your mental therapist. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual help is somebody who helps with your spiritual life. A mental health specialist or a psychologist, somebody who helps you manage your emotions. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Well, well, we, we, we just hope that we had more time because I'm, I'm, there's, so, there's so much to yeah. you know, talk about, so much yes. ground to cover. Um, time is usually an enemy. And I'm sure time is one of the reasons that people get depressed. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. it's 24 hours in a day. You have so we much to do. Like hours. Uh, yeah, mm. you can. But we'd like to thank you for taking thank time you so out, you, you know, to come share, you. you know, this information okay. with us on this subject that is critical yeah, to the survivor of Nigeria and the family. Thank you once again, and we thank wish you the very best. All right. <laughs> Next on the show, remember, it's not always um, with John and Helen alone. We have mm -hmm. Ferron. Owo Tomo, you know, who has um, a, a different perspective. She always brings, you know, another angle, mm. another picture to this show. And I'm looking forward to her segment. Well, this time she'll be talking on young people and depression. True. All right, so don't go away. And um, we'll take a break. When we come back, you will meet Pharaoh.